How's it going everyone, it is Pangino here and in this video we're going to be showing you guys how to get the best FPS possible in CSGO ready for 2022. This video is going to be helping you guys achieve the best FPS possible on your system whilst reducing input latency by going through a bunch of in-game optimizations, configs, launch options and some other quick and easy to apply tweaks for every single person watching this video. If you do enjoy this video and are happy with your results, please do consider pressing that like button and dropping a comment just to help me out with the YouTube algorithm and get this video promoted to as many people as possible. First of all, in the description down below, you'll be able to find the CS2022 FPS pack. Now, by all means, you do not have to download this pack, but to follow every single step with inside of this video quickly and easily, put it onto your desktop. Once the pack has been downloaded, you should just be able to go ahead and double click with inside of the pack and drag the folder onto your desktop. Starting off by booting into Steam. Navigate to the top left hand side, click on the Steam logo, navigate down to settings. With inside of here, go to the library section and ensure that low bandwidth mode, low performance mode, disabling community content have all been selected. Once have been selected, go ahead and select OK. We can also navigate down to the friends and chat option. With inside of friends and chat, go to the top right hand side to the settings cog. Navigate down to enable animated avatars and avatar frames. I would recommend turning this off. For launch options, go ahead and right click on CSGO. Navigate down to the properties section. If you aren't planning on using the Steam overlay whilst in game, so if you don't like to access the Steam market or are not bothered about using the workshop with inside of the game, I would currently recommend disabling the Steam overlay just for that extra bit of performance. For launch options, I would first of all recommend deleting any and all launch options which you have as many of them are most likely completely outdated. Let's navigate inside of the description down below or inside of the FPS increase pack you'll be able to find launch options in both places. The only option you have to change with inside of here is going to be dash frequency. You want to have this set to your monitor's refresh rate. Go all the way from the right hand side all the way to the left, right click, select copy. Navigate down to launch options, right click, select paste. Navigating over to local files, selecting browse. And we can then navigate down to the csgo.exe, right click, select properties. Go to the compatibility tab. First of all ensuring that disable full screen optimizations has been checked, then navigating down to change high DPI and overriding the high DPI scaling behavior performed by. Select OK, apply and OK. We're now going to go ahead and delete all of our old config files, auto execs and video settings files from the game so we can boot the game. This will then generate us brand new files ready for 2022. Before doing this I would 100% recommend booting into the game, taking note of your current mouse sensitivity, your scope sensitivity and all of your custom keybinds as doing this step is going to delete all of those and which we can easily implement but if you haven't taken a note of what your sensitivity is it's going to take you ages to find that again so we're going to navigate inside of our file explorer navigate over to this pc on the left hand side go to your local disk c drive go to program files x86 where you'll be able to find steam scroll down once again to user data and you'll then be given one or more folders depending on how many profiles have signed in on this pc to see which one of these profiles you need to change which is your main profile navigate into steam navigate down to your inventory go to the trade offers section then go down to who can send me trade offers. Scroll down, you'll then be able to see partner equals and you'll see a number here. As you can see, this is my profile ID. If you go back inside of that folder, you can now see that this ID matches the one within inside of my link, so I know this is my account. Within here, you'll be able to see a folder named 730, go inside of this folder, local, CFG. If you do want to make a backup of these for any reason, go ahead and do so now. Create a folder on your desktop, just call it backup. Then what we're going to go ahead and do is drag all of these files out of here and move them into that folder, so this folder is completely clean. Navigate back with inside of Steam and quickly boot CS. Just simply boot the game and close it once you're in the main menu. For this, we're going to navigate inside of the FPS pack provided. Go inside of the configs to install page and you'll be met with four configs. Low end, medium end, recommended and ultra low end config. Click on the config which best matches your system specs and desired outcome. If you want every frame possible, going with the medium end config on a super high end PC is probably going to net you the best results. If you want the best mix of competitive settings and performance, go with the recommended. You'll be met with three files. You first of all want to copy both of the video files by right clicking, selecting copy. So navigate down to the bottom left click on the Windows button, click on document. Go to the left hand side to this PC, local disk C drive, program files x86, user data, clicking on the profile on which you clicked on earlier on, going into the 730 folder, local CFG. Right click, select paste, replace the files with inside of this destination. What we now need to go ahead and do is install our autoexec.cfg. For this, you need to right click, select copy. So for this, go to Steam, navigate down to CSGO once again, right click, select properties, local files, then select browse. We're then going to paste the autoexec with inside of the main directory. 
go inside of your CSGO folder, right click, select paste, and then finally go inside of the CFG folder with inside of here, right click, select paste. If at any point during the video, if you are interested in any of the hardware images being showcased in this video or the hardware being used for all of the gameplay clips, you can find links in the description down below for all of the hardware used with inside of this video, alongside some recommended hardware if any of you guys are looking for any potential upgrades, which would be great parts for the best FPS possible within CSGO for a bunch of different price points. We can also support the channel if you do make any purchases. We're quickly going to be downloading a workshop map where we can go in and fine tune all of our config settings, our crosshair, map, hard radar, just by selecting options with inside of the game. This is the best way to do it and this will completely change the way you set up your game if you haven't already known about this. So get inside of the description down below and click on the workshop map link provided. Scroll down to the subscribe and download section and make sure that you are subscribed to this. Click the subscribe button, ensure that you are actually signed into your Steam account and next time you boot the game you'll see that you have the workshop map available to you. We can then go ahead and boot into the game. Once you've booted into the game we're first of all going to take ourselves into the settings menu and go through our video options. You might also want to turn off the in-game music overlays and other music options which will be enabled within the config. Whilst inside of it I would actually recommend disabling the advanced 3D audio processing. I personally do not like the way this sounds and you'll also see a slight performance improvement. Once we're done with inside of it we can take ourselves over to the video section. For every single person watching I would recommend using a brightness of 130. Aspect ratio and resolution are complete personal preference but do set them up how you wish to have them. Display mode in every single case you want to ensure this is set to full screen. This will minimize input latency and improve performance in every case. For the most part all of these in-game settings underneath here should be set up for the best performance possible depending on which config you have selected. We then want to navigate over to our game options and ensure that enable developer console has been enabled. Finally before we boot into the workshop map go inside of your keyboard and mouse settings, input your old mouse sensitivity, your old zoom sensitivity, enable raw input on mouse as you should be using this and input all of your old key bindings. Once you've set up all of those options we can navigate over to the left hand side to play CSGO, go to the drop down menu, select workshop maps. You should then be able to see the config generator map with inside of it, select this then hit go. Once you've booted into the workshop maps, this is where you'll have all of the options available to you where you can just shoot any of these options and the options will be changed for you automatically. You can never get over and fine tune your crosshair just by shooting all of the options where you can make it bigger, change the color, and really hone in all of your settings from your view model all the way over to your HUD and the HUD size. If you're into esports and pro play, you can also never get over to the preset configs tab where you can see community members and you can also see professional players configs. And for instance here, if we go over to Navi and we can select simples config, that loads his view model, radar settings, HUD settings, crosshair, ready for us to use and try out. But I don't like how much the gun moves, so I'm going to go and put gun movement on minimal, so the gun's not going to move around at all. But the only options I would recommend doing are selecting the radar, audio, net graph, miscellaneous, FPS boost. I'm also going to be setting up clear decals. This is incredibly important for improving FPS. So we're going to be selecting set key and I'm going to be setting this to backspace. Click and confirm. Every single time I now press backspace with inside of my game to clear decals, that's going to remove and other in-map effects take away from some FPS. As you can see here, when I'm spraying my AK, you can see the traces leaving my gun going to where my bullets are. In my opinion, this makes it easier to spray for newer players in the game and you might like this. The first of these commands is going to be R underscore draw traces, either zero or one. Having draw traces underscore zero is going to disable all traces coming out of weapons across the map. This is great for FPS, but if you are being sprayed through the other side of a smoke, this will disable the tracer coming out of their gun, making it potentially harder for you to spot them. I'm going to be keeping that at one. The next option for traces is going to be R underscore draw traces underscore first person either one or zero. This takes that same tracer command but applies it to your weapon. But again, this will take away from FPS and some people don't like this. For our last and final important in-game command, this is going to be R underscore score dynamic. This is going to remove the muzzle flash from enemy players and some other effects with inside of the game. Again, if someone is spraying you for a smoke, you will be able to see their muzzle flash from the other side of that smoke unless they're using a silenced weapon. But this does take away a significant amount of FPS on all systems. So depending on your play style and what mode you're playing and how important that is to you, either enable or disable this option. Last but not least, you can also adjust your in-game FPS cap. For this, we're going to be typing in FPS underscore max. If you want unlimited FPS, which I would recommend for most most people running on higher end systems, as the higher your FPS, the lower your input latency will be, I would recommend going with FPS underscore max zero. For those of you that want slightly less load on your system and prefer a more consistent FPS, the most common FPS cap in which most people like to use is FPS underscore max 400. For any of you running on an AMD Radeon based graphics card is to uncap your FPS above 400, as there's currently a bug with inside of most Radeon graphics cards where if you're playing a game which doesn't actually stress out the GPU that much, the GPU clock drastically underclocks itself, running on an 
an uncapped frame rate will help maintain a slight load on the GPU, which will allow the GPU to be hitting its normal clocks and even boosting. To save your config, it's super simple and easy to do. All you have to do is just exit out of the game and the config will now be 100% saved. We can navigate down to the bottom left hand side, type in game space mode, then enter. Ensure that Windows game mode has been enabled. Navigate over to Xbox game bar and ensure the enable Xbox game bar has been disabled. We can navigate down to the bottom left hand side, typing in GPU space settings. You may or may not have the option for hardware accelerated GPU scheduling available to you. If you do have this option available to you, ensure this is switched to the on position. We're also going to be navigating down to the graphics performance preference tab, then selecting browse. We're going to be keeping this page up, navigating down to Steam, right clicking on CS, going to properties, local files, browse. We can navigate up to the top to this directory bar, double click. We're then going to highlight all the way from the right, all the way to the left, right click, select copy. Exit out, minimize Steam. Go back with inside of this browse section, double click on the navigation bar with inside of here, remove this PC, right click, select paste, then press enter. Select csgo.exe with inside of here, select add. Navigate down to the options menu, then ensure that high performance has been selected. Once that's done, go ahead and exit now. Piggybacking off of that step, we can now go ahead and focus on our Windows Power Plan, which is more important than you think. Go ahead and type in Power Space Plan, then select Edit Power Plan. Go to the Power Options button in the directory. You'll then be able to see all power plans available on your system. Select Show Additional Power Plans, and we're going to be looking for either the High Performance or Ultimate Performance Power Plan. And if you want to go with that power plan, select it just like so, as this is more than good enough. But if you do truly want the best performance possible for your machine, it is recommended to unlock the Ultimate Performance Power Plan with inside of Windows. Navigate to the bottom left hand side, type your Windows button, type in CMD, right click on the command prompt and run this as an administrator. Once that's been done we can navigate inside of the description down below where you'll be able to find the power plan command which can be copy and pasted. Once you've copied the power plan go back with inside of the command prompt, select Control and V on your keyboard to paste, then press enter. After a few short seconds you should then be able to see Power Scheme GUID Ultimate Performance. Go to the refresh button with inside of power options you should then be able to see Ultimate Performance. Select the power plan, exit out. For a quick optimization for anyone using either Microsoft Edge or Google Chrome, open up your web browser, go to the right hand side to the three dots, navigate down to your settings menu, navigate on the left hand side to advanced, then go to accessibility. Scroll down until you find the continue running background apps when Google Chrome is closed option and make sure this is switched to the off position. We can now clear out some quick and easy temporary files and caching files from our system to stay on top of our system maintenance. Navigate to the bottom left hand side, type in percent, T-E-M-P percent, then press enter. Once inside of here, we then want to highlight and select all files and folders all the way from the top, all the way down to the bottom, right click, select delete. If you are met with a prompt that looks similar to this, select do this for all current items, then select skip. You'll either have everything removed or you'll be left with a few files and folders, which was simply dumped by an application on your system, left on Windows to soak up resources and valuable disk space. Take yourself to the bottom right hand side to your task icon tray, open this up and start closing out of any and all programs you know you're not going to need for playing that game. If you have excess web browser windows open, close out of the web browser. If you have game launchers open for a game in which you're not playing, close out of those extra launchers. There's actually some incredible incredibly important optimizations in which we can actually enable four graphics card drivers individually to remove excess bloatware from the drivers, freeing up extra performance and drastically reducing input latency. And also a video coming to the channel soon, which is going to be covering de-bloating NVIDIA drivers. So if that is something you are interested in, which every single person should be, as there is excess performance just sitting there, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel for when that video drops. Right click on your desktop, either open up the NVIDIA control panel or the AMD Radeon settings panel. For NVIDIA users, start off by going to adjust image settings with preview in the top left hand side, ensure the middle option has been selected, press apply. Then go down to manage 3D settings on the left hand side. With inside of here the options you want to look out for are first of all going to be low latency mode. You want to ensure this is set to ultra as the game currently doesn't support Nvidia Reflex. We're going to be navigating down to OpenGL rendering GPU, go to the drop down menu, select the GPU you have installed. Power management mode, selecting prefer maximum performance. Preferred refresh rate should be set to highest available, shader cache on. Texture filtering quality needs to be set to high performance. Then navigating down to threaded optimization, leaving this set to auto, and those are the main settings we're going to be adjusting. Press apply on the bottom right hand side and we can continue on. This now lastly leads us on to the advanced section of the video, and you should proceed with caution before applying any of the following optimizations, as if you're not confident in being able to turn these optimizations back to default, could run into system instabilities in extremely rare cases. Before applying any of the advanced optimizations, we're first of all going to be ensuring that we have a restore point set, so we can quickly and easily revert all of these optimizations if we wish to do so. Navigate down to the bottom left, then type in Restore. Select Create a Restore Point. With inside of here, go down to your C drive, highlight C drive, select Create, 
name the restore point, we'll just call this one CSGO, create, once that's been created select close and OK. As this can have some great improvements to reducing impa latency, is to navigate to the bottom left hand side, then type device space manager. Select device manager, scrolling down until we find the system devices tab, scroll down to the H section. You're going to be looking for the high precision event timer, right click on it and I'd recommend disabling this service. Once that has been disabled, we need to restart our system for that to take effect. If you notice that your Windows is incredibly slow, sluggish, or something just doesn't feel right, do come back with inside of here and re-enable the high precision event timer if you do run into any issues, but for most people watching this video, you shouldn't notice any slowdowns and we're going to be keeping this off. We can then apply our registry optimization fixes, which are incredibly useful for getting extra performance out of your games. For this, navigate inside of the reg optimization fixes folder inside of the FPS increase pack. We can start off with disable DVR1, just simply click on the registry, select yes and OK. You should continue to do this for all of the registry files until we get down to the last two. For this you have the low to medium end optimization and the medium to high end optimization. You want to select the optimization which best represents the system in which you are using. If you do want to revert the registry back to its default values, go inside of the default reg files to revert to stock option, select each registry and this will then take you back to the default value. Some final advanced optimizations, these are going to come in the form of jumping into your system BIOS and doing some research and some minor setting up to ensure that you are getting the best performance possible for your your machine. You can pick and choose which of these optimizations you wish to follow, you'll obviously get more gains as you look into more of these, but these are going to be my main pointers in which you should look into to ensure that you are getting the best performance. First and foremost, you want to ensure that you are running your XMP or DOCP memory profiles for any custom memory kits in which you have installed. You could be running on the best system in the world with the most expensive RAM possible, but if you do not make sure this setting is turned on in your BIOS, it's going to be running at stock settings. You won't be getting any of the benefits of the fast RAM or the lower latency timings on that, so you could be seeing some phenomenal performance gains ensuring that those are set up. You could also look into disabling hyperthreading on Intel based CPUs and SMT on AMD Ryzen CPUs as this will disable the hyperthreading technology on those CPUs. Your multi-core performance won't be as strong but your cores will no longer be split into two logical processors allowing for those cores to work faster and be overclocked further. In all CPU bound games they all benefit from an all core CPU overclock. You might be familiar with boost algorithms such as PBO on Ryzen CPUs and Intel Turbo Boost. While these are great technologies for stock settings, if you really do want the best performance possible out of your machine, it is highly recommended to set a static all core overclock. Looking into one or all of those BIOS tweaks is going to allow you to further enhance performance and really squeeze out every last bit of performance from your system safely and easily. If you're running on a Ryzen 5000 series chip, it is definitely recommended to take yourself over to the CPU configuration tab or search around in your BIOS until you find both of the options for CPPC. In both cases, you should have these two options available to you. It is recommended to turn both of these off for a latency improvement, which will also in turn boost your FPS. My only other advice for those of you running on slightly lower end systems or older systems who are struggling to get great FPS on every single map, and then just dial in the few maps in which you know perform well in your system and try and stick to those so you can maximize where your PC runs best. If you guys have enjoyed this video and are happy with your results, please do remember to leave a like, leave your results, questions, queries, and suggestions in that comment section down below. And remember to subscribe and press that bell notification to be notified instantly whenever new content goes live in the channel.